Good morning students. We are discussing for railway and airport engineering. Well, in today's lecture, we will discuss about points and crossings. Well, this points and crossings are provided to transfer the railway vehicles from one track to another. The track may be parallel to or the diverging from or it can be converging with each other. These points and crossings are necessary because the wheel of the railway vehicles are provided with the inside flange and therefore they require such kind of special arrangement in order to navigate their way on the rails. The points or the switches aid in diverting the vehicles and the crossings provide gaps in the rails so as to have the flange wheel to roll over them. A complete set of points and crossings along with the lead rails, those are known as the turnouts. Now let's discuss that what is turnout. Well, this turnout is an arrangement of points and crossings with lead rails by means of which the rolling stock may divert it from one track to another track. While uh, talking about the direction of this turnouts, this a turnout is designated as a right hand or a left hand turnout. Those depending on whether it diverts the traffic to the right or to the left direction. The direction of a point is known as a facing direction. If a vehicle approaching the turnout or a point has to first face uh, the thin end of the switch. Okay, but the direction is trailing direction if the vehicle has to negotiate a switch in the trailing direction. So therefore, when standing at a toe of a switch, if one looks in the direction of the crossing, it called as the facing direction and the opposite direction is known as the trailing direction. Well, there are various parts of this turnouts. Uh, those are a pair of tongue rail, a pair of stoke rails, two check rails, four lead rails, then uh, a V crossings is being provided, the slide chairs needs to be provided, stretcher bars, a pair of hill blocks, switch tie plate or the gauge. Some of the parts for operating points such as roads, cranks, levers, etc. And locking system which includes locking box, lock bar, plunger bar, etc. Okay. Let's see uh, where and how these parts are useful in this turnouts. Well, uh, first one that is a pair of points or switch. Well, each pair consists a tongue rail and the stock rail. A tongue rail is tapered having a toe at one end and the heel at the another end. Okay, uh, this is fixed to heel and to regular alignment and it can be moved about the point so that in one position it leaves a gap with the alignment and then it permits the train to go along that straight alignments. The second one that is a pair of stock rails. They are the main rails of the track to which the tongue rails uh, fit closely against them. Uh, they are made of the rail steel and have the same dimension as for the rails in the track. The next are the two check rails. Okay, uh, check rails are provided on the opposite sides of the crossings for guiding one wheel of the vehicle and thus check the tendency of other wheel to climb over the crossing wings. Then four lead rails to be provided. In a turnout, lead rails are the length of the rails from the heel of the tongue to the toe of crossings. Then a V crossings to be provided when two rails cross each other. And if one rail is given the V shape so that the flange of the wheel can cross the rail. So this is why V crossing needs to be provided. Then the next one that is slide chairs well these are the special plates which are provided under the stock and tongue rails 
these are essential because the tongue rail have to move towards or away from the stock rail on this siding plates the stock rails remains fixed while the tongue rail is able to slide then the stretcher bars to be provided this the toe of both the tongue rails are connected together by means of stretcher bar and so that each tongue moves through the same distance or a gap while changing the points and for that this stretcher bars are needs to be provided the next one that is the switch type plate uh, well this is provided below the slide chairs at the top these are used to hold the track rigidity to the definite gauge distance at the toe of the switches the next that is been provided is the uh, different parts such as rows, cranks and lever. So these are used to connect the tongue of switch to the main rail or to isolate the tongue from the main rails. While this connection and disconnection of the tongue rail to the main rail is done from the single cabin by operating the level or the levers. Also a locking system is to be provided because the driver has no instrument to know whether the signal sign is correct or not. Well, in the locking system, the tongue rail and the signal operate simultaneously. In this system, the position of the signal cannot be changed unless the position of the switch is changed. For this operation, the plunger bar and the lock bar are also being used. Okay, now let's see the main topic which is points and the switches. Well, this switch consists of a stock rail and a tongue rail. Okay, a set of switches consists of a left hand switch or the right hand switch. The switches are tapered in the shape with the thicker end which is known as the hill fix to the main track and the thinner end known as the movable top. Okay, while well, talking about some of the components of the switch, which are a pair of a stock rails, a pair of tongue rails, heel block, or we can say the distance blocks, stretcher bar, and the switch tie bars. Well, the almost all the components we have discussed uh, in the turnouts, while well, talking about this heel block or the distance block. These are the blocks which are inserted between the heel of the tongue rail and the stock rail. These are made up of cast iron and are used to provide a clear gap for the wheel flange. Well, uh, talking about the types of the switches, we have two major types of switch that is the stub switch and split switch. Well, the stub switch are uh, no more use in the Indian railways, but the split switch consists of a pair of stock rail and the tongue rail and having the two major types that is the loose heel type and the fixed heel type. While this loose heel type uh, switch, the tongue rail are joined to load rails or we can say the lead rails by means of fish plates. The two front poles are kept loose to allow the throw of switch and the bolts are kept tight when the tongue is open. So probably this type of uh, uh, switches or the points are used for the short length switch. Okay, while well, talking about this fixed heel type and this type of split switch the tongue rail does not end at the heel of the switch but extends further and make a rigidly connected system. The movement at the toe of the switch is made possible on account of the flexibility of the tongue rail. So these two are the subtype of the split switch or the split points. Well, let's discuss about the different types of crossings okay before that let's see what is crossing well uh, it is a device 
which provides to flange ways through which the wheel of the flanges may move when two rails intersect each other while uh, a crossing or we can say the VPs points wing rails check rails chairs blocks these are some of the components of the crossings talking about the characteristics of the good crossing well the crossings has to be rigid to withstand against the severe vibrations also to prevent the wear on the parts of the wing rails special steel should be used then the foot flange of the wing rails should be connected to the sole plate using the rivets then the crossings body should be as long as possible the thickness of the crossing nose should be about 6 to 18 millimeter so these are some of the characteristics of a good crossing well talking about the different types of crossings we have a classification of crossings based on two different things that is the based on shape and the assembly of crossings but based on the shape of crossings acute angle crossing obtuse angle crossing and right angle crossings are the classifications and for the assembly of the crossings we have the spring crossings and the ramp crossing well talking about the classification based on the shape of crossings the first one that is the acute angle this crossing is obtained when a left hand rail of the one track crosses a right hand rail of another track or we can say the vice versa well if the angle of intersection is acute angle it is termed as the acute angle crossings this type of crossings is widely used in the indian railways okay the second one that is the obtuse angle crossing here when a left hand rail of one track crosses the right hand rail of another rails or the vice versa at an obtuse angle which is known as the obtuse angle crossings in the case of obtuse angle crossing the long wing rail do not carry the wheels as in case of acute crossing but it act as the check rails while in the diamond crossing a pair of special crossing is being used which is called as the obtuse crossing third one that is the right angle crossing or the square crossing when two straight tracks cross each other at the right angles they give rise to the square crossing this type of crossing must be avoidable on main lines because there is a heavy wear due to the dynamic load so these three are the classification of crossing based on the shape of the crossings now let's see the types of crossings based on the assembly first that is the spring row spring crossings well in a spring crossings one wing rail is movable and is held against the v of the crossing with a strong helical spring while the other wing rail is fixed as shown in this figure when a vehicle passes on the main track the movable wing rail is snugged with the crossing and the vehicle does not need to negotiate any gap at the crossings okay in case the vehicle has to pass over the turnout track the movable wing is been forced out by the wheel flange and the vehicle has to negotiate a gap as in a normal turnout so this is this type of crossing is useful when there is a high speed traffic on the main track and the slow speed traffic on the turnout track so such type of uh, system has been used uh, in the USA while in the India it is not more favorable because there is a danger of an accident in case of the spring brakes so these are some of the uh, classifications of the crossings okay with that we are summing up this session uh, thank you so much students for your kind attention I hope you understand this topic properly uh, I will see you in the next lecture with a new topic thank you so much